YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to make a pigtail wig. This is going to be a long one, so grab some snacks, sit back, and strap in. So we're going to start off with a glued wig cap. Everyone pretty much knows how to make one of these, but if you'd like me to explain how I make mine skin tight against a doll's scalp, let me know in the comments below. Get your cat helper to inspect the fibers we're going to use, and when he's decided they're good enough, we're ready to go. I'm going to be making wefts for this wig, and because this particular wig is short, I'm going to make the weft from the middle of the hank of hair. I don't know why I didn't use a brush for this. I think I maybe have lost it briefly. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, we're going to mark the layout of where we're going to be gluing the fibers on the wig cap. The general rule for this wig is two lengths around the head, one around the part, and then the wefts for the part itself. However, I do recommend you glue extra fiber on either side of the line indicated down the back of the wig. This is to avoid the mistake I made and save you doing the extra step later. To start, I always glue hair along the sideburns. It makes the wig look more natural by covering the ears, even if it's not in line with the guidelines that I've drawn. Since this wig is going to be short, I'm snipping off the excess and using it for the fringe. When you glue the fringe, angle the hair slightly out away from the face. This will make it form more naturally when you style it later. If you need help gluing the first two rows of hair, I've linked a video that goes through that process in more detail. And once you're finished gluing those two rows, we're going to start putting fiber around the parting line. At this point, we're covering the bare wig cap and any visible glue, and we're making a space for the parting line wefts to go. She looks like a blue cousin it, oh my gosh. Use a lot of glue here if you want, there are no problems with that. In fact, more glue means that when you do start cutting into the wig, it'll be more sturdy. We're going to cut up the west while we're waiting for the previous gluing stages to dry, preferably overnight. So trim off the excess glue and then cut up the larger wefts into smaller pieces. Once the wig has dried completely, we're going to use a combination of craft knives and scissors to create a line for the part, usually about a millimeter thick. Protect the doll's head with some plastic wrap or a freezer bag. Grab your favorite glue and a brush. Tie off the sections of hair so they won't get in the way while gluing. And a tweezer will probably help if you have trouble pushing the wefts in the hole. And I'm having trouble dropping wefts. Oh my gosh, this is not a good sign. Start by gluing a few small wefts along the front of the parting line, not on the sides, and in such a way that when they spread out, they cover the fringe, not the pigtails. We're not yet covering the rest of the part, just the fringe. Then we're going to do the same at the back, covering the glue at the nape of the neck, not the sides. 
Don't worry about the sides yet, we're just focusing on getting the front and the back to look neat. You can see there's still a lot of glue visible, but it's only on the sides of the wig because we've been focusing on covering the front and the back. At this point, we'll pop the wig on the doll's head and let the glue dry. I've also taken out the pigtails so the hair doesn't settle into that odd style and want to stay like it forever. The part is halfway there! Yay! So now we're going to work on the sides. Here you can put in as much weft as you want just to assure everything will look nice and covered. I do still recommend gluing one side, letting that dry and then working on the other side as it minimizes mess and potential waste. You can see later that I didn't follow my own advice and I pay for it with a bit of a struggle and a bit of a mess that I make. You can be liberal with your glue usage here, doesn't really matter. In fact, it makes your web cap stronger. Sometimes it's easier to put in all the wefts you want and then glue them in place. That's what I did here and it's just honestly far easier sometimes. So push in the bunch of wefts, spread them out and then glue them in place. Ooh, the part's looking so neat, but we can make it neater. Grab some alfoil, squash it down on the doll's head, making it nice and tight, and leave it for a few hours. Yes, it's even smooth. Ah. Now if you didn't have enough hair at the back like I hadn't, here's the trick to fix it. Draw a line down the middle of the wig cap. Then we're going to glue wefts on either side of the line in a crisscrossing fashion. We only need small wefts and we don't need all that much, just enough to cover the glue of the weft beneath. When that's all dry, we're going to brush and glue each of the wefts to the base of the bottom layer of hair. So brush out the hair, apply a bit of glue, and stick it in place. Really work in the glue so that every strand of hair is wet and it all stays in place.
5 or 10 minutes later while the glue is still tacky, cut off the excess fibre. Utilise the tackiness of the still wet glue, and you can use fresh glue if you need, to sculpt this clump of gluey hair so that everything lays flat. There you see, now we have a back piece that hides the wig cap. Yay! Water is going to be your best friend while styling this wig. Brushing everything where you want it to go, making it damp, and then letting it dry can be a great technique for styling alpaca. I'm separating a section at the back to help further disguise the mistake I made and cover the glue sections of the wig. If you've glued better than I have, you probably won't need to go through this modification. I'm going for a bit of a choppy look with the fringe. I think it looks super cute on young girls or people with round faces like Nani. When cutting the hair with scissors, the best advice I can give you is to always cut up. Unless you want dead straight, perfect style bangs, cutting up will give you a more realistic end as it emulates the tapering our hair does naturally. Fringes should always form a triangle shape. The point of the triangle or the top of the triangle will be the beginning of the parting line at the crown of the head. The sides of the triangle will go down to the sides of the fringe, wherever you want them to be framing the face. Then connect these two endpoints across the face and this will be the fringe. Mine has a bit of a curve, but it's still very much a triangle shape. The secret to making a pigtail is to start with an elastic band. I personally find these way too big to use on dolls, so we're going to do a little magic to get rid of it. Tying thread above the elastic and then removing the elastic will give us a perfectly formed little pigtail with none of the bulk of that chunky hair tie. This back section is used to hide the glue, so I'm just going to make sure it's trimmed naturally and then blend it into the pigtails. Upon retrospect, I probably could have just crossed two sections of hair to either sides of the pigtail. <laughs> Whoops! Keep styling until you're happy with it. I kept coming back to the side of the fringe just because I wasn't satisfied. Now we're going to use a tiny piece of ribbon and fabric glue. Cut the ribbon to loop once around the hair with a bit of overlap. Add a bit of glue to one end and then wrap it around the thread and use a sewing pin to hold it in place while it dries. Then you can start styling the tail. I want mine to be cute and kind of round, a little bit like Marinette's from Miraculous Ladybug. Does anyone else watch that show? And there we have it. I really like how choppy this wig looks. I know that's weird since it's more popular to do smoother style cuts, but I don't know. I feel like it looks super natural and youthful on Nanny's face. What about you? Do you like choppy cuts or more blunt style for bangs?
So yeah, that's all for this tutorial. If you happen to use this video to aid your own wood making adventures, I would love to see them. Please like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!